celebrating your freedom. And uh, I would like to ask you that how do you feel about it that to getting uh, to having an exhibition yeah, about the film? This is a really big deal for us to be in the Hollywood Museum to have this exhibit. Um, this is a testament to the success of the movie. Uh, we were so so proud of everything we we. Um, accomplished with the movie. It was a culture-defining moment. It's a story we don't ever see told on the big screen about our community. It was a love letter to the Mexican-American community. And Richard's a hero to us, and so I wanted to be sure to tell his story. And you directed the movie. Um, could you just highlight one of the experience, one of the memories about it? There are so many memories. I ate a lot of Cheetos, as you can see. <laughs> but um, no, it was a really special experience because I got to make it with, with peers from my community. My DP was Latino, all my department heads were Latino, my costume designer, my production designer, my props guy, like all of these things matter, like who tells the stories matter, who's behind the camera matters. And so I knew that you know, Hollywood defines what heroes look like, and they never look like us. And so I knew I had an opportunity to do that. And one more question. Uh, some, day, some years ago, I seen you on stage on the AFI Festival. You were talking about uh, the Mexican community and uh, about your story that you arrived to the States with $22. And Dolores was the one who was um, like supported you. So uh, did you see an improvement of the... Uh, you know, the diversity of Hollywood. Yes. Unfortunately, not enough. I mean, we are only 5% in television and film. So uh, I think, you know, we need to do a better job and keep our foot on the gas with creating more movies like Flaming Hot. That's why it was so important for Flaming Hot to have the success it had so that it would be a message to studios or to gatekeepers to say, oh, that really worked. Let's make another one. Let's make another one. Let's make another one. And so um, I think diversity is like a buzzword Hollywood likes to throw around. Um, and you really have to do something about it, not just say you're doing something about it. And I think, you know, this studio, in particular Searchlight, really got behind me in the story, and um, I was really happy with the results. Well, thank you so much, and congratulations for the movie. Thank you. Thank you already created so many amazing music for the world. But why this movie was different, if it was different? Oh, I, love, I love the movie. I love Richard's story. It's so inspiring. You know, that someone that was, he was a janitor, and he just, because he had that fire inside, like my song. Um, you know, and he, he was someone that wouldn't, you know, my, I, my dad sold life insurance, right? And he, my dad never took no for an answer. That's was, and the key to his, his success, the key to my success is I don't take no for an answer either. And so I was really drawn to the story because I really related to it. <clears throat> um, I related to the fact that when everything's against you and everybody's telling you you can't do it, that's when you do it because you've got that thing. And that's what the song's about. Nothing can hold you back. No one can kill your vibe when you've got the fire inside. You're going to own this life. So uh, did you have a lot of conversation with Ava before the movie? So the, you tr uh, with Ava, did you have a lot of conversation about uh, with the director, basically? Yeah, we uh, talked a little bit. You know, I knew about the movie because I'm um, Devon Franklin who produced it. I knew about it before she even got hired to direct it. He was telling me about it because I did um, Breakthrough. I wrote the song, <clears throat> I'm Standing With You. I got nominated for an Oscar for that. What number was that? 12? 14 now. I think that was number, I think it was number 11, actually. Um, and he was telling me about, about the movie and how he was trying to get the job for, for Eva. I was like, that sounds great. Like, you know, the janitor that comes up with, you know, calls the head of the company from his janitor's room. It just was a, it's a great story. It's, a very, it's the American dream, you know, it really is. I think it's a wonderful exhibition, but I would like to ask your opinion about it. Oh, I love it. It's amazing. That car and the, it's amazing. I love it. I love this. How many times you visited the set? To visit what? Did you visit the set uh, when they were uh, shooting? Oh, I, I've never went to the set when they were shooting, only in the video. And the video is great. Well, you'll see it. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Oh, well, we're thrilled to have everyone here today. We're celebrating Hispanic Heritage Month. And we're starting off from the 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s uh, with my godfather, the classical piano great and conductor Jose Aturbi, who starred in many MGM films uh, in the 1940s. He he was the first musician to sell a million copies of a record. And for that milestone, they celebrated uh, his uh, happening 
by giving him a star on the Walk of Fame. And so that was the first musician to get a star on the Walk of Fame. Very exciting. All the way until today. And today we're celebrating Flamin' Hot. You know, it's amazing. And in between we have J-Lo, we have Sofia Vargara, so many more Latina actors that are just amazing. And it's very exciting because uh, each person involved in each of these exhibits were trailblazers. And that's what we want the public to recognize, that they are trailblazers and that they got their fame and fortune the hard way, with hard work, with dedication. You know, they spent hours and hours uh, honing their craft. So it's so exciting. Uh, who did you meet with Eva? Uh, because we are also celebrating her today because it's her movie as a director. And um, can you share something about how the communication started with her? Uh, hold on one second. Uh, okay, so sorry. Sorry. So I just want to ask you about the connection with Ava because we also celebrated her as a director of the movie. Yes, it's very exciting and she has a fabulous movie out, Flamin' Hot, the story of Richard Montanez and, you know, he went from janitor to the boardroom of Frito-Lay, you know, of, of Cheetos uh, and PepsiCo. I mean, it's so exciting when you think about that. These are these fabulous stories. They're so inspirational and Eva Langoya has captured that beautiful beautifully, along with the fabulous song uh, that Diane Warren composed. How long will we see the exhibition? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Along with the with the with with Diane Warren's fabulous song, "The Fire Inside," yes. sung by Becky G. <laughs> So they are both here today in this press conference, so we already seen amazing uh, scenes because they were sitting in a car from the set. And um, uh, how long we can uh, see this, how, can long, how long we can visit this exhibition? Through uh, the, uh, the holidays this year, through the end of the year, all through the holiday season. It'll be fun, so so many people could come and visit, you know. Probably, and congratulations for the exhibition. It's a wonderful exhibition. Thank you, thank you. It's the, the real story. Well, you know, the, the, the movie is, is really close to the real story. And what I love about it, and, uh, it really is everybody's story. It's the American dream. It's, it's for anybody who's ever struggled. You know, it doesn't matter uh, what color you are, what gender. I mean, we've all struggled in life. So I'm just glad that we're able to almost, you know, resurrect the American dream for everyone. It's true, and it's re really universal, as, as you mentioned, but uh, how did you came up with the idea? <laughs> well, I, I did, but uh, she's the one that uh, cooked the product, so it was uh, an team idea. Team effort. That, yeah, it was a team effort. Mm -hmm. We're a team. Okay, so please share your opinion about it. So what was it? What do I remember about the process? Yes. The process is... What do you think about this? What do you think about that? What do you taste this, taste that? More this, more that. Let's add this. What about that? So it was just going back and forth, just bouncing each ideas off each other. But he came up with the original, like, let's do this. So I just used my cooking skills, and he used his. <laughs> I, I, I knew that we were going to use her, um, her seasoning, because she's a great cook. I just didn't know which product to put it on. Now, You'll, you'll have to understand that I went to the store and I saw that there was no uh, spices. You know, we had like barbecue and sour cream, but nothing really, you know, we call uh, spice, you know. So I said, you know, we're going to put your uh, chili sauce on a chip. But we didn't know what chip. So I always say this. It's a little bit of one of my quotes. I always say that, you know, sometimes all you need is one revelation to create a revolution. And what is a revelation? A revelation is something that was always there, but it's been revealed to you. One day I bought a corn, elote, put everything on it, and I took a bite, and I looked at it, and I got a revelation. I said, man, that, look, that looks like a Cheeto. And I said something that every great leader said, what if? What if I put chili on a Cheeto? So I ran, and I told her, hey, we're going to use your, we got in a Cheeto, next thing you know, we have all this. Tell me how many Cheetos you eating nowadays? I eat them all the time. They're delicious. <laughs> they go with everything. Go when we first met her, 
when she first, uh, we met her in the office. So we sat for hours mm -hmm. talking. And sitting down with her was just like immediately sitting down with a family member. She's very gracious. She's very, uh, she's very kind and, and easy to talk to. She completely understands because she comes from our, our type of uh, lifestyle, our background. Mm -hmm. So it was easy for her to relate to our story and understand it. And um, she tells it so well. And so, um, and then we visited the set um, twice, two or three times. A couple times. And, and she, she came over a couple oh, times too. Yeah. So. so we communicated on a regular basis. So it was always, um, it's always wonderful when talking with her or meeting with her because she's a lot of fun and she's very gracious and she really gets it. She gets it. Hi, nice to meet you. I am Virak from Bionic Buzz and we are standing next to the car that is in the Flaming Hot movie. This car is yours. So please share me something about it. When did you start to collecting car and um, how many cars do you have? We have approximately, we have three cars at this time. Uh, two 58 Chevys and a 56 Mercedes. Um, we started collecting, I started collecting cars back in 1986. And here, when my son was born, he started since he was an infant. He, he was been all rounded his whole life, and now this is his beauty right here. How long uh, did it take to make it, the car look like this? Uh, the way it is right now, it took about approximately like a year. The year from when we got it, we changed the interior, cleaned it all up, uh, redid all the uh, chrome and everything, so it took about a year from when we got it to get it to the state that it's in now. How did you meet with uh, Eva Longoria? And, uh, with, uh, so how did the car get casted for this movie? Well, it wasn't cast. We got a, uh, Ray Costa got a hold of us. And he asked us to come and participate to help out with, uh, with this show. Mm -hmm. yeah. Are you surprised or is it was first time when a TV crew or a crew uh, found you? Or, or you already worked with a um, lot, lot of TV uh, or film productions? This is the first time we've ever done anything like this. Yeah, as far as with, the, with this car, yeah. Well, my dad's been in a couple other documentaries as far as low riding and cars are concerned, and he's done a couple of things like that. He's had his cars in the magazines before and taken to different shows. So this is my first time doing anything like this. So this is really cool, a really awesome experience. So what is your favorite car? The favorite car? A oh, 58 Chevy Impala. Yeah, favorite car. That's that's what I grew up on with my dad building his. Um, he built it since I was a little kid. He finished it when I was five years old. So that's all I saw. That's all I knew growing up. So the 58 is my favorite. And uh, what is the next project? Are you working on some uh, new car? I mean, not new, but you are working on some cars. Well, we have the Mercedes, like my dad said, the 1956 Mercedes we're going to start working on. And then if we find something else uh, that comes across our way, we'll work on that too. Yeah, right now we just have the 58s and the Mercedes, but if another Chevy or something comes our way, we'll work on that also. How do you find the cars? You are just going and look around in the town and you're trying to, um, you know, asking around. Or, or So how is it work? Exactly. Asking through friends, through contacts. Uh, looking through internet all over the world, you know. Yeah, yeah whenever, you, uh, whenever you're in the car world, you kind of meet different people that lead you to different cars, and friends of ours help us out a lot to get the cars too. Well, thank you so much for sharing the information, and please share your social media, or how can we find you? You, you can find me on Instagram at Daniel underscore Ariaga, A-R-R-I-A-G-A 58. That's my Instagram. Hi, Jamie. We are in the Hollywood Museum today, and it's a very special event because we are celebrating Eva Rongoria as a director of uh, the director of the Flaming Hot movie. We are also celebrating the uh, Hispanic Heritage Month, and uh, we are celebrating, you know, films and um, and love and uh, heroes like uh, civil heroes. So please share some. Uh, some thoughts about it. What what do you think about? It? Please comment these things. Well, I celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month every day. I can't get out of it being a proud American Latino. But uh, specifically, when it comes to Hollywood, there's so few of our stories that get out, and it is great that someone like Eva Longoria has the name and the drive and the talent to be able to bring from the page to the screen 
flaming hot. You know, hence I got, I'm rocking the red here because Latinos, we, we, you know, we're Latin hot blooded. We're passionate about life. We're passionate about family. We're passionate about food and cars. Cheetos. And, and Cheetos, yes. Did you check out this convertible? I've got mine downstairs, you know, because that is part of how we roll as Latinos, you know. We've got our own uh, culture, our own ethnicity, our own uh, traditions, and then we blend them together with you know, American uh, ideology and or uh, visionaries like vehicles, like this beautiful car that's here and mine downstairs. That's part of something that, uh, you know, is very unique about Latinos and their cars. And we do this with our style and we do it with the way that we envision something that exists that maybe we can put our uh, spin on it like in the movie Flaming Hot. Here, Cheetos, very established, very well enjoyed by millions of people all over America, let alone around the world where it shipped, but one individual saw it differently. One individual had the vision of, wow, Latinos would like that if you added some more, you know, chili, some spice, you know, like us, you mm -hmm. know, and hence created this flaming hot version of Cheetos, and it's generated over a billion dollars, and therefore people, I hope, through the movie will be able to identify that Latinos, for some reason in this country, um, we are either considered uh, still foreigners or um, immigrants and or aliens, and we are part of the American fabric here because we've contributed in automobiles, in business, in entertainment and politics. And so we have a lot to offer, and I hope that movies like Flamin' Hot and other production companies, mainstream studios and TV shows will showcase Latinos as part of the American culture that we already are. Exactly, I wanted to ask a more serious question about that. How is to be a Latina in, uh, in, in uh, the U.S. culture. So we already, I understand that uh, you are enjoying life and you're celebrating life every day, but maybe it has another side of the story. Well, uh, definitely feeling that we are here uh, participating, living and thriving, and yet still don't feel to be um, acknowledged very much in the mainstream. And, and we feel that. And uh, we'd like to see ourselves reflected more broadly. We have great stories from our culture in East LA, which seems to be predicated in many of our stories, because it's part of our culture. You know, African-American stories, you have a lot of them start out in the hood. And, uh, and in our case, even all the way back to Mexico, which is our next door neighbor, right? But the thing is that we really need to be able to uh, identify beyond just those stereotypes and broaden it to mainstream us the way the great African-Americans have done in this country. You know, they're in politics and they're in, uh, you know, uh, business and they're in education and, of course, entertainment and sports. And we can do all that, too, but we do it with our style. And I would like to see America embrace Latinos on a much broader scale. Some of us are uh, dark complected, some of us are a little light complected, uh, and yet we're all still Latinos, just like we're all Americans. Isn't that what being a, an American is? The melting pot of all these different ethnicities all together as one unified uh, society, having the freedom to do anything and achieve all of our dreams and goals. That's very true. And uh, yeah, I mean, uh, the diversity of this country is amazing. And uh, it's just beautiful to live in this country and making American dreams like in the Flaming Hut. Thank you so much for the interview. Thank okay, you. thank you so much. Take care.